his mom, mom has in her bloodstream. Said Ladies that and gentlemen, at fifty percent chance that it could be passed on to the babies, you know, that they could end up. Gentlemen and ladies, exactly what he went through. Ladies and gents, the name of this video is "Poisoning the World" okay, from the said, USA. Pay attention to this last, right here. Uh, paragraph. Big announcement. Three M. Two days ago. It is going to stop making scotch guard because it is too persistent in the environment and gets into our blood. They then told us they are going to stop making a related product that is an essential ingredient in the Teflon polymer. Also is very persistent and also gets into blood, but so far no science it has hurt anyone. If it does, we are really in the soup because essentially everyone is exposed one way or the other. The first time we came across this issue, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've not known about any of these studies, not known about any of these chemicals, not known of this video, this video poisoning the world from the USA, hyphen, the devil we know. This was a BBC, see it right there, BBC report. Okay, here is the problem. I told all of you that they were putting chemicals into the environment to weaken our immune system. Well, this particular PFOC or PFOP or whatever it is, it's uh, called C8. The, the generic name is C8. This particular chemical is the very same chemical they use in Teflon. It is heat activated, so when you're cooking with it, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, only because of watching this, before I heard Alex Jones talk about it and other people talk about it, but, you know, he talked about a lot of stuff, and he didn't prove it, he just talked about it. Here, I'm actually watching the people talk about how they've gotten cancer, talk about how they've had children with birth defects. Everybody, you're thinking it's the virus, um, antivirals, and what is that, um, going and getting vaccinated? You think it's those things that are causing the child defects. If only you knew that they knew that this stuff was getting into people's DNA, getting into their bloodstream. So let's play that part one more again, because I think that is necessary. So we're going to move this over here for just a second, because I need to pull that up. So one second, let's go right about there. Yeah, we want where he's reading. So. Okay, but it says, big announcement. Go ahead and read that next to the last uh, paragraph. Big announcement. 3M, two days ago, it is going to stop making scotch guard because it is too persistent in the environment and gets into our blood. They then told us they are going to stop making a related product that is an essential ingredient in the Teflon polymer, also is very persistent, and also gets into blood, but so far, no science it has hurt anyone. If it does, we are really in the soup because essentially everyone is exposed one way or the other. Everyone, because DuPont and 3M, the first time largest the chemical manufacturers in the world. It was May of 2000, and it was just a short little story that 3M had decided to replace the chemistry that uh, was underneath Scotchgard with something else, and that this was going to cost them hundreds of millions of dollars in that year. 3M was presenting to the US EPA some information that had just come in, some rat studies with PFOS and the widespread presence of the chemical being found in the blood as well. And EPA was expressing concerns about that data. And so 3M and the EPA hammered out an Now remember, PFOS, PFOA, FO anything. F-O anything is letting you know it's the same chemical. It's just you'll see P-F-O-A, P-F-O-S, P-F-O, whatever. Same chemical. Pay attention. An agreement where they would voluntarily take PFOA and PFOS off the market. At the time, the best producer of the perfluorochemicals was 3M. DuPont looked at that business, and I was there at the time, and they said, Yahoo, the king is dead. 
And in fact, within a few months, DuPont made a decision not only to continue using PFOA, but to actually begin manufacturing PFOA at its facility in North Carolina, correct? I, I don't recall the exact timing or phasing, uh, but uh, you're correct. Uh, within some period of time, we concluded to manufacture the product and to continue using the product. Now, you all have to understand, they did this with government approval because, see, they can't put those chemicals out into the environment without the EPA and other government agencies giving the okay. So when they do Teflon and all of that, they've been doing that since the 50s, when they first created it. It was designed to get into the bloodstream, to weaken the immune system. Everybody has this in their system. This is not a heavy metal. Okay? There's not a rock band, so you don't get rid of PFOAs, PFOSs, you don't get rid of the POFO or PFO. You don't get rid of any of those chemicals because it's designed to get into your bloodstream to weaken the bloodstream. Why? Because they need to decrease the population of the world. The easiest way to do that is to introduce something that attacks the immune system and works off of these chemicals. Why do you think they've been putting this junk into our environment through jet fuel, diesel fuel, chemicals, uh, propane, all of that. But been trying to tell you, I haven't watched any of these videos. I haven't done any of this. I just knew that that's what they were doing. I knew that the moment I heard the phrase chemtrails, that's all I needed to hear. Because we, when we heard Kofi Annan say that the population of the world at the time was 5.3 billion people and that the ideal population is 2.3 billion people I remember telling my friend Jerome with an N not an M Jerome I remember telling him and his friend you know I can't even think of that uh, person's name right now Dagnabbit well anyway, I remember telling both of them how in the world are they gonna do this how are they gonna get rid of 3 billion people and one of them said the water. I said no, because they got to drink the water. And the other one said food. No, because they got to eat the food. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't figure it out at the time, but I figure it out now through the air. Why? Because they have something that they can take, which gets it, for the most part, out of their system. Not completely, but enough to where they can survive. Let's find out. Oh, by the way. 3M so-called pledge to phase out C8 chemicals, that's the PFOAs, PFOs, all together, by the end of 2002. Uh-uh, because they decided to reintroduce it. The very same year, DuPont began production of C8s at its plants in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Imagine that. North Carolina, see what y'all done did to us? Rob Ballard, the attorney who was working on the Tenon case at that time, came across this announcement of 3M's decision, and that, in fact, is when he made the connection. DuPont had dumped a similar chemical in the water on Tenon's property. I sent... Now, when you get a chance, please watch this video, because Tennant was the gentleman at the very beginning. He was a farmer. He started documenting because he worked out a contract. DuPont had borrowed or bought some of his land, some of his property, and they shared an adjacent creek. And DuPont started releasing these chemicals into its creek. It got a patent from the government to release these chemicals into the creek. His cattle started dying, deer started dying, other animals started dying. He started noticing it. So he started his own investigation, and it's because of him that one little, what do they call him, crazy farmer? Yeah, they, they tried to make him look like he was psycho. They tried to make it look like he was a conspiracy theorist. Well, it's because of him that they are talking, they talk about the tenant um, case. It's because of his case that all of this got started. The letter to the US EPA on March 6th of 2001, summarizing what we were seeing in the internal documents, providing information to the agency to let them know 
We think you ought to look into PFOA and investigate it. Rob Ballot would fight DuPont to disclose documents that had anything relevant to this chemistry. As these documents came to his possession, he would send the most relevant ones directly to EPA. Now, I want you all to understand, I'm only going to play about maybe three more minutes of this because there's one section I want you to see because it's that important. Other than that, I'm definitely going to suggest you go and watch this video. It is well worth the listen because I promise you, you will understand. Some of you, no, I'm not going to talk about anybody negatively because some people just are not going to take the time and then they're going to be complaining about their relatives, their friends, their family members, either having birth defects or suffering heart attacks or suffering strokes or getting cancer. Have you not wondered why so many people are getting cancer? I told you, go back and look at the 50s, the 40s, the 30s. You didn't find that many people getting cancer. It started in the 70s when you would see the special reports, the making the 6 o'clock evening news that one person in one part of the blah 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 country has cancer. It made the evening news when a person got cancer. Now a person gets cancer, <laughs> please, there's a cancer treatment center on just about every block in every city. Come on now. Because it's commonplace now. All by design. So, pay attention. DuPont tried to get a gag order from a judge to stop him because they knew that he had the goods. He knew what was going on with their chemical and could nail them. Down here it says that Balot has given 130 of our worst documents that he got in discovery to EPA. Hold on. So that you guys will know, this is an attorney for DuPont during the original deposition with the tenant case. So this is the attorney. They wanted to do the depositions because he had cancer. They knew he wasn't going to live much longer. He ended up settling with DuPont in 2001, and he died of a heart attack in 2009. His wife died of cancer two years later, 2011. So, one more. You see that 130? Yes. Now, what are the worst documents? If if you were to look at the DuPont documents, how would you uh, consider them the I'm worst not documents? I'm entirely sure I re have recollections. I assume they're the tox toxicology documents. Highly toxic. Wait, hold on. Did y'all see that? Let's go back just a second. Just a second. Right here. We're looking for the DNA part. So I want y'all to pay attention. You, uh, consider them I'm worst not documents. entirely sure I re have recollections. I assume they're the tox toxicology documents. Uh oh, that's a YouTube thing, y'all. Look, statistically significant excess of cancers. I told you, if you go back through the '70s, you'll see that that's exactly what started happening is that the cancer rate started to increase in this country now this says from 1956 to I believe that's 1967 can't see it because of the background and then this one has it from 1955 to 1983 okay I'm not I wish I could tell you guys how much I've been wanting to get this information to you but because the information is put out there because it's already public knowledge because they already had this I can now tell you I tried to do several videos where I tried to point out to people that the cancers started roughly when they started giving us these GMOs you know the vegetation that they made the size of buildings the individuals who work for companies like Gerber can tell you about the, well, they can't because they signed a non-disclosure agreement so that they could not tell you about the experiments being done on the vegetation that they were growing, the GMO vegetation that they were putting this stuff into people's children's food. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. That's my Al Green ringtone for... I've been born by the river in a little tent 
That's that ringtone. Hold on. Uh oh, I keep wanting to stop it right there on the DNA because I want you guys to see that. Tick tock, tick tock. Nope, not there. Right there. Let's see. And now I got to hit it right there. You see, it says that C8, the chemical PFOAs, PFOSs, PFO anything, that's C8 could be affecting DNA. In the worst case scenario, that C, uh, C8 could be affecting as large as, I don't know what this is. Oh, sorry, carcinogen. Oh, it could be classified as a large C carcinogen. Really? Ladies and gentlemen, do you understand what they're saying that DuPont was putting out a carcinogen into the environment and individuals have been ingesting that into their system? That's why this video is so important. Okay, we got about, oh, 30 more seconds and then we're going to continue. All the way back to the 60s, they are aware, clearly aware of the risk of the product. Their own documents showed that this is a toxin. They continued to find toxicity effects through the late 1960s. By 1988, they started doing cancer studies. In that particular study, increased rate of Leydig cell tumors were found, correct? Uh, that is correct. Their studies were showing rats dying, dogs dying, monkeys dying. They were seeing testicular tumors, liver disease, pancreatic disease. Before they even said pancreatic disease, I was going to say pancreatic cancer, anyone? I was literally going to say that before they said pancreatic disease, I was going to say pancreatic cancer, anyone? Prostate cancer, anyone? Breast cancer, anyone? Liver disease, sclerosis, and all these other diseases. Pay attention, everybody. Go back and look at the medical records in the 70s. You'll see that cancers were very rare. The people who got cancer in the 60s was very rare, and most of them were people who worked in factories such as the DuPont factory. But notice how it was now reaching the larger cities, and it was making the news. I remember this because I told you I'm audible. I remember watching the news. Wait a minute, didn't you say your mama used to make y'all watch the news as a family at 6 p.m. every day? Dan Rather? Walter Conkite? I remember good old Walter. I remember good old Dan Rather. Uh, who else was there? I'm sorry, I can't remember all the old timers. I remember Dan Rather, Walter Conkite, uh, who, some of them, the other ones ended up on 60 Minutes, uh, Steve Wallace, you know, I remember these people, uh, Diane Sawyer, she came later, because during the 70s, all the news anchors were men, okay, that's why you see the TV show, uh, Anchorman, that's why you'd see those TV shows making fun of it, because it was all the news anchors were men, so I remember all of those news anchor. Uh, Steve Jennings and uh, all of them. I remember them people because I watched the news and that's how I could tell you I remember being able to change it from CBS to NBC to ABC. If I missed a story on ABC I could turn it to CBS because CBS were reporting on it later and then NBC were reporting on it later but not anymore. If you want to watch the news and you want to catch the same story, you got to pretty much flip it to each channel at the same time or have that multi-screen thing going on because you go to one channel and they're talking about the exact same thing, giving you the exact same story and almost the exact same words. Why? Because they're getting all of their junk from AP or Reuters. Nobody's doing any independent news anymore. But getting back to this so that you understand, in the 1970s, somebody getting cancer it made the evening news because it was very rare for people to get cancer then in the 80s 
you started hearing about cancers more and more, and then they'll be doing special reports on this and that and the other and how many people had cancer that year. Then they started having these cancer treatment centers pop up. And that would make the news that a new cancer treatment center was opening up and this will help people in this area and this area really needs it because the cancer rate in this area is blah, blah, blah. Then in the 90s, you started seeing these cancer treatment centers popping up all over the place because people were having to travel so far to a cancer treatment center. Now they were in their neighborhood, like a dialysis center. Okay, but now everywhere you go, there's a cancer treatment center. Every hospital you go to, they have a cancer treatment center and an outpatient center and all of this stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, it's because of companies like DuPont and 3M. Yes, I said that. Because the documents prove it. They knew that it had long-term effects. But it, what they didn't tell you is it had generational effects. You saw the young man earlier where he had the C8 chemical in his blood at levels higher than his mother whom worked at a DuPont plant whom had him and he was deformed at birth. Like I said, go watch the whole video. It's up there on YouTube for your benefit, not for mine. Okay? For your benefit, this video, poisoning the world from the USA. The reason why most of you haven't seen it is because it's a BBC report, not an American report. Why? Why would the networks put this on TV? And why would you watch it? Okay, this wasn't done by some little munchkin sitting over in a corner with a camcorder. This was done by the BBC. Because they want to make it look like America's the dirty partner. Well, America is. Because they've tested these chemicals on the American people first, then the rest of the world. We are the guinea pigs, people. Why? Because we're all minors. We don't have any rights. Pay attention! All right, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to take the time to do this because it is important that you know that it is the chemicals which are causing the problem. And when this so-called pandemic happens, understand it is the chemicals that's the problem. Not the heavy metals. It is the chemicals. Yes, the heavy metals work on it, dampening and weakening the immune system. But it's the chemicals they put in the environment, in our gasoline, our diesel fuel. Okay, that's the issue. It is proliferated throughout this entire world. It's highly prolific. Okay. I'm hoping that those of you who are needing to get this, get it. And those of you who don't care to get it, well, eventually you're going to get it. All right, have a good day. Have a good life. Have a good night. Under 23 minutes. I'm great. Goodbye.